you're anxious thoughts are racing mind is going body is going red you're shaking you're nervous oh my gosh how are you going to get through this what if everyone judges you what if everyone thinks you're weird or you're a loser what if they talk about you afterwards what are they thinking oh my goodness you can't do this you're not good enough you're ugly you're stupid people think you're ugly and stupid you can't do anything why did you think you're going to be able to do this did you actually think he was going to like you how did you ever think you were going to be able to get far enough you don't look good in that outfit how are you gonna wear that outfit you look so stupid sometimes all the affirmations in the world are not going to change your mind it is a part of who you are okay you are anxious typically more than a normal person but what is worse is knowing that you are anxious and telling yourself that you are not good enough and believing it enabling your anxious thoughts so you use those thoughts as an excuse to not do them to not change to not grow to not even try because what's the point if you feel like everything comes easier to everyone if you feel like things are flowing effortlessly to your friends to your family, to your partner, but not to you. Because your anxiety is holding you back from living your dream life, you think you can't speak to the people, you think you can't apply to that job. To all of my anxious people, this is my love letter to you. Today's episode is going to cover some hard truths about your anxiety and how you can regain power against it. It is time you stop fueling your anxiety. You're going to deal with the shame, the guilt of having these thoughts, and you're going to learn how to move past them. You're going to get real. We are going to get deep. So grab your popcorn and let's get into this episode. Welcome back to the Get Up and Glow podcast. I'm your host, Madison Haynes, your self-improvement glow up fairy godmother. And regardless of how severe you experience anxiety, by the end of this episode, you will feel so motivated, so powerful to go forward and run in the direction of the thing that you know is holding you back in life and become your dream woman. So get tuned in for the ride of your life, girl. Do you stay in bad situations because you know the outcome? And knowing the outcome is far less scary than all of the anxiety you would have to face going through that change, even though you know it would lead you closer to your dream life. Not only is it hard enough to deal with your own limiting beliefs, your own spiraling, but you have to show that you are anxious to everyone else in the world. This everyone else has to know. So you shake, you go red, you stumble on your words, and that just makes it so much worse. And because that you know that they know that you are anxious, you get even more anxious, which heightens your symptoms, making you spiral more and just contributing to the worst cycle ever. You feel like you're alone. You feel like you can't be yourself. You feel like there is a version of you that sees your dream life, that wants to become her, who is productive, who is confident, who is beautiful, and you try to become her. You strive to be her. And just when you feel close, the ugly stepmother that is your anxiety that is within you feels like she is creeping out, feels like she is trying to steal your joy, tell you that you're not good enough, try to hold you back. And you're always hyper aware. You're hyper aware of yourself. You're hyper aware of your physical presence in a room. You can't be relaxed. You always have to think, am I sitting straight? Do I look okay? Am I smiling enough? How am I coming off? Am I coming off rude? Because you care so much about what everyone else thinks. But what if I said something that was mean? But what if I did something that was weird? What if I didn't get that job? I'm not gonna get that job. I'm weird, I can't do it. Girl, it is time to stop. Do you want to be the best? Then you have a choice to make. You can sit with your anxious thoughts. You can keep spiraling. You can sit on the couch and eat your comfort foods and do nothing about it and stay stagnant in life and let your anxiety win. Or you can accept the hard truth that your anxiety may never fully go away and you don't have power over that. But you do have the power to reclaim your life. You do have the power to take those anxious thoughts, stomp them down with your own self-confidence and prove to yourself that you can and you will do whatever you set your mind to. You can choose to learn to live with your anxiety, to make it manageable. When you have those anxious thoughts that come in, you are going to accept them. You are going to pay attention to them. And then you are going to throw them out the window and keep running towards your dream life. You have a choice. You can either sink or you can swim. You can't choose the cards that you've been dealt. You don't have a say in that. So how can I reclaim my anxious thoughts? How can I deal with my anxiety? How can I finally win. 
You can learn to identify your triggers. Sometimes nothing is triggering you, but quite often you will have certain events or certain things that will trigger anxious spirals, like big life changes, for instance. First, start by identifying the root cause of some of your anxiety so you can prepare for it in moments when you know those triggers are about to occur. If you know a big life change is coming up and that is hard for you, okay, that's fine. So amp up your self-care. Take more baths. Take more time to rest. Do your future self a favor. Meal prep for her so she doesn't have to cook or clean. Pick your outfits for the week or even for the month so you don't have to worry about what you're going to wear. Make your future life easier for when you know you're going to face those hardships. But in the moments when you can't predict an anxious spiral and you have to cope, find healthy ways to do so. Girl, I know you're not going to be dealing with your anxiety by binge drinking, by scrolling mindlessly in your phone, or doing anything that is going to prevent you from living your dream life. Uh Uh-uh, if you wanna take your power back, here's what you have to do. Implement healthy routines. Make sure you drink enough water. Eat. Please, I know when you're anxious, you feel like throwing up, you don't feel like you want to eat, make sure you fuel your body. And girl, exercise. In the moments when you feel super stressed or you feel anxious, I know all you want to do is binge watch your favorite Netflix series, but please just go out and be active. Just try it for 20 minutes and then notice the difference in your mood. Girl, go to therapy. Therapy is nothing to be ashamed of. If you want to avoid emotionally dumping on your friends because you can feel people getting tired of you repeating the same situations over and over again because you can't get over it, but you know your friends have already given you the best advice possible and you already know that that advice is valid and it's truthful there's so much merit to it but you still can't make that connection to your brain then it is time to go to therapy you can also journal your thoughts get them on paper learn to self-soothe if you want to completely transform your life if you want to build confidence if you want to continuously feel motivated listen to self-improvement podcasts read self-improvement books this is going to help you realize that you are not alone everybody else is struggling everyone else has the i can't do this what if I'm not good enough thoughts? But the most successful people in the world don't have the absence of those thoughts, but rather they have the motivation and the courage to have those thoughts and do it anyways. To have the courage to try, to be resilient, to not give up, to not look at failure with fear, but rather excitement because they know with every failure comes with learning lessons. It takes you closer to finding that success that you are so desperately after. Shift your mindset. These bad things happening to you, all of the struggle that you have in your life, you can turn it around for the better. It can be good. If things never made you anxious and you just went through life with ease, would it be a life worth living? Because if you constantly felt the same all the time, you didn't have any emotion, you wouldn't know what true happiness was. And you also wouldn't have any type of feeling indicating what life you actually want to live. So you just stroll around life aimlessly, not even knowing if you're creating an existence that you're proud up. Pain gives you the opportunity to grow only if you use it. You can feel that pain. You can feel bad about yourself. You can cry, throw yourself a pity party, but you need to pick yourself up and say, I'm in a situation I am not happy with. I am anxious and scared as heck about how the hell I am going to dig myself out of this hole. You have the choice to reclaim your power against your anxiety and try to fight back. Use your pain as fuel. Prove those people who deaded you wrong. Prove yourself wrong. You can do this. You will do this. You are so much stronger than you give yourself credit for. Why would you hold yourself back from self-betterment and let those thoughts win? Because if you don't take your power back now, it will follow you throughout your whole life. Evolution is pain. Use it for good. Do not give up. The pain and the anxiety will never go away, so you might as well use it as fuel to glow the F up with every hard choice you make in life. Every time you take a leap against your anxiety, you are teaching yourself to be better, to be smarter, to think differently. And with every single time you do that, you get better and stronger and you're becoming this more powerful person. I can guarantee you that nobody has it easy as you think they do. People are just easier at hiding it than others. Girl, stop feeding your anxiety. It is doing nothing for you. You can't change it, but you can choose how it defines you. You are listening to this podcast because you want to glow up. You want to become the best version of you. So I am not going to enable you. I am not going to give you that advice. I am going to give you the hard truth, the pill that might be hard to swallow, but that is you have to get up and do it anyways. You can't allow life to beat you down. Life is hard and it is going to get harder, but it is so 
freaking beautiful. If you reframe your mind, if you teach yourself to have a growth mindset, if you tell yourself that your anxiety is okay and it's normal and you're not horrible, you're, it's not something to be fearful or ashamed of, but rather something to accept into your life, to acknowledge the thought, to recognize that that thought is being stemmed by a trigger. And the reality is it is not that scary. It is not like a lion trying to come and eat you. These feelings and emotions are just a part of us as human beings. We were programmed to always be in fight or flight. But the reality is we're in 2024. Your teacher, your boss, that person is not a lion that is going to try and tear off your head. I can promise you that the worst case scenario will not happen. And even if it does, you will survive. You will get through it. You will become so much better. Think about any hardship that you had in your life. The most triggering events. It was horrible. I am not going to sugarcoat it. I am sure you cried and it was hard and you thought you weren't going to get through it. But girl, you did. And look at the glow up you had afterwards. Here's the thing that you need to understand. You will get through this. You can reclaim your power back against your mind, against your self-limiting beliefs. But you won't be able to do that until you recognize the fact that they won't ever go away. The only thing that you need to change is you. Your follow-up thought, how you choose to deal with those anxious thoughts when they come into your mind at first. To recognize that it is just your anxiety. It is not your reality. You need to train your brain to understand your triggers, to question yourself. It could be as simple as cycle tracking and realizing, oh, I'm in the little stage of my cycle, which probably affects my emotions and my hormones, and that is causing my anxiety to heighten. Change your brain, change the game. Girl, your phone addiction is messing with your brain, and you really need to get a hold of that. By constantly checking your phone, by constantly just surrounding yourself with screens, you're giving your brain little hits of dopamine throughout your day, and that is messing up your mind. Because when you don't have that screen and you have to focus, you have to study your work or do something that you don't want to do, it makes you sad because you are so used to the dopamine levels consistently through food, through screen time. But if you did something as little as literally limiting your screen time or teaching yourself when you have that urge to pick up your phone to not even stopping 50% of the time, you will see a huge change in your productivity and in your mental health. Recognize your feelings to the point where you know that you've already processed them, you communicated them, you've spoke them out to existence, you've even rationalized your thoughts and you know that they do not serve you, you know that they're invalid, but you keep feeling about it, you keep spiraling about it, you can't let it go. This is your sign to either talk to the therapist or journal, but move that reoccurring problem away from your friendships and relationship. You will thank yourself for this in the long run. It is so important that you teach yourself how to self-soothe. Now in this episode, I'm not going to say this is going to heal your anxiety because I know it is not going to go away. What I'm going to do is give you the mindset shifts to help you reclaim your power and the coping techniques that you can do to feel slightly less anxious in moments where you just need to power through the anxiety. So let's say you have a big presentation that you have to do. You're terrified for it. You know you're going to be anxious. You think you can't get through it. Of course, you're going to stomp on those self-limiting beliefs. But here are some exercises that can help you reduce the physical anxiety symptoms that are so unbearably embarrassing. First up, don't be embarrassed. This is who you are. You're not going to change it. So you can choose to be embarrassed by it. Know that you're going red, feel so ashamed, and then go redder. Or you can just be like, meh, this is me. I'm going to roll with it. I can guarantee you the second that you just choose to accept, eh, this is embarrassing, but this is me. And no, I love myself. If you stumble on your words, if you forget a word, if you don't know what to say next, just keep going. People will understand what you mean. Who cares? Move on. Do breathing exercises. While you're waiting to present, you can literally take a deep breath, hold it in for a few seconds and then let it go. You can even do something like focus on one thing to distract your mind from the anxiety symptoms. And yes, you should say, just focus on what you're going to say. That's great, sure. But if you're feeling anxious, you need to expel that energy some way. So you can talk with your hands or the biggest hack is wiggle your toes. Even if you're in the dentist office, even if you're getting a needle, you're anxious, but whatever, wiggle your toes. Your brain will focus on the fact that you're moving your toes and it will help just a little bit distract your brain brain from the anxious thoughts from what you're actually experiencing. If you have social anxiety and you struggle with eye contact, look at someone enough to recognize their eye color. Just own yourself, girl. It is always better to be yourself than be fake. If you are nervous, sometimes admitting that I'm a little nervous is okay. It makes you human and people like that way more. People want to see the real you. They don't want to see some stuck up version of you that's so perfect. They can see through it. But if you're yourself and you just are confident with who you are and accept your flaws and all which are beautiful,
beautiful. People are going to be like, wow, she's pretty cool. She's got something special. That is the it girl. Because the it girl, the hot girl isn't perfect. The it girl is just a girl who knows her worth, knows that she's a badass and is not going to apologize for it. If you look at any of the it girls, they probably have flaws people can pick out. But people think they're so cool because of the demeanor, because of the energy. And you can have that too. It doesn't matter if you're anxious. It doesn't matter if you go red. It doesn't even matter if you shake. Girl, adopt a growth mindset. If you think you're never going to change, you're never going to be good enough, you're always going to feel like this and there's nothing you can do about it, you will because you're manifesting it. You're telling your brain that that is your reality and you're living in it. Enabler. Mm -mm, girly, not anymore. You now have a growth mindset. You're welcome. You can learn. Every challenge comes with so much growth, so much self-discovery. And you know, oh my goodness, I'm going to be so anxious during this change. It is going to be hard. But instead of saying, oh my goodness, I can't do this. I'm going to be so anxious. So I'm going to run in the other direction and avoid it. Mm -mm, you're going to say, oh my goodness, I'm going to be anxious. This is going to be really hard for me. You know what? I'm going to go to my friends and family and say, hey guys, I'm doing this thing and it's going to trigger me. So I might be anxious. I might not be as active on social media. I might not be as readily available to respond to text messages because I'm going to focus on myself and I might need some additional support. Then you're going to go and say, you know what? I know this is going to be a hard time. So I'm going to meal prep. I'm going to start working out more. I am going to start taking weekly baths. I'm even going to go as far as planning out all of my outfits for this week. So I don't even have to think about it. So I wake up in the morning and I always look good. I'm always confident that I look good and everything is automated because I know I won't have the mental capacity to do that for myself in the future. You're going to journal everything out. So in the days where they're your rough days, you think I can't get through this. You're crying. You're spiraling. You're going to journal it. And then four days later, when you have a good day, you're going to journal that again. You're going to keep going throughout that process and write down your feelings as you progress. But then you can go back and read the journal entries, see how hard you thought it was, see how you thought it was going to be over for you, the end of the world as you knew it and how it got better slowly and slowly and all the things you learned. And then you are going to use that as proof next time you have to experience something anxiety inducing that you can get through it and you will come out better on the other end. Research shows that exercising for as little as 10 minutes every single day can significantly reduce your anxiety. Girly, capitalize on that. If you are struggling with those recurring anxious thoughts and you can't quiet your brain and it is robbing you of joy, try meditation. The truth is we don't know what the future holds. We can only do our best to work hard to make the best decisions we can to lead us to the dream life that we hope to have in the future. But the reality is we don't know how much time we have left. You could be so scared. You could be spiraling about situations that you either have no control over or could potentially never happen. In life, sometimes the plans that you're trying so hard to make are going to be the complete opposite of what actually happens. And then you've wasted so much of your time spiraling, fighting, freaking out with yourself about what is going to happen next. Stop living for the future. I'll be happy when. Be happy right now. Appreciate the era of life you're in right now because one year from today, your life will look completely different. When your negative or anxious thoughts arise, you need to train yourself to go, okay, this is a negative thought. I am anxious about this. Now, why? Is this true? Is there merit? Because if you already process that thought, you already know it has no merit and you already know it's adding no value to your life. Sometimes you just have to train your brain to not pay attention, to not waste a second more of your time on that because you only have 24 hours in your day and eight of that is spent sleeping. So why are you going to waste your precious moments spiraling about things that you've already processed and you know are not going to serve you? The reason why so many people are anxious and stressed is because they're still hung up on the same thoughts they had yesterday. The average person has around 50,000 thoughts a day. And according to the National Science Foundation, about 80% of those thoughts are negative. 80 and 95% of your thoughts are reoccurring thoughts. This means that most people in the world walk around in a negative state because of everything they're thinking about moment to moment. Every time one of those 50,000 thoughts occurs in your brain, Chemicals are produced in your brain that trigger reactions throughout your entire body. Have you ever felt so upset or anxious about something and then you just ran into somebody or you watched something that instantly made you laugh or feel better and it felt like your anxiety or your stress just melted away? It is because your attention shifted. So quite literally, change your thoughts, change your mind. Girl, stop sitting in your anxiety. You are good enough. You can do it. You can do anything you set your mind to. Don't be the person that is holding yourself back. Prove those negative thoughts wrong. Reclaim your life. 
life. You can greatly influence your self-talk solely by the content that you consume. Consume positive news, positive things online, be around positive people, surround yourself with positive colors, positive affirmations, positive quotes, things that are going to make you happy. It is no coincidence that you turn on the news and you see things that are sad. You go on your feed and you see everything that's sad. You watch things that enable you, other people struggling because you're sad and you want other people to be sad too to validate your own emotions and feel better about your yourself but it's not doing you any good what you consume on a daily basis becomes part of your self-talk be weary of that be picky of that if you focus on the i'm not good enough so much that you'll become so paralyzed in that thought it will become your reality you will hold yourself back this is how our deepest beliefs are formed everything you learn to do in life is a skill and skills require hard work, deliberate practice, and effort. So to begin by reprogramming your mind for success, by reclaiming these anxious thoughts, teaching yourself positive self-talk, that will take effort. It is not going to be a light switch that goes off in your brain. You're not going to listen to this and say, okay, I am healed. It is going to be hard. You are going to have hard times. When you have an anxious thought, pair it with a positive one. I am. I can. I will. I am good enough. I can do this. I will become successful. I am more than my anxiety. I can accomplish anything I set my mind to. I am mentally strong. I am dealing with this the best I can. I am good enough. I am beautiful. I am smart. I don't have to prove myself to anyone. Create a life blueprint. Ask yourself this. If your anxiety didn't exist, if you could do or become anything in life without failing, what would you do? Do that. Make a blueprint of the hopes and dreams that you want to accomplish in your life. A lot of the time, if you don't have strong life goals, you feel lost. And sometimes finding your passion, feeling so, so in love with a goal, the idea of just trying to strive to achieve it, you'll fall in love with it so much that it will be worth those anxious thoughts. It will be worth the effort because you are fueled by your passion. You are fueled by your why. And by setting smaller goals that get you towards those big goals, you have some to be proud of yourself every day. You have proof that you are good enough. So you don't just have to say, oh, I can do it, I will do it. You are already doing it. You have an average of about 692,000 hours in your life. How do you want to spend them? Do you wanna waste the first half of your life telling yourself that you can't do this, making excuses for yourself, and then the last half of your life wishing that you would have just ran through the change, you would have dealt with your anxiety, you would have been able to make progress on your dreams, and then feeling resentful? Or do you wanna take charge of your life right now? What is one activity that you could do right now, today, that would move you closer towards your goals? Taking action eliminates fear. Sometimes you have to be the person that gives yourself a shove. You are never going to feel ready. It is never going to be easier. And then once you find finally push through and you face your fears, you face your anxieties and you come out on the other end, you feel so much better for it. And then the guilt sets in. Why did it take me so long to achieve this? Why did it take me so long to realize this wasn't that scary? And then again, the spiral comes back. I'm not good enough. Life is so much harder for me than it is for everyone else. No, don't be ashamed. You made that hard choice. Let that be a lesson to you to take action now. Don't waste any more of your time. Face your fears. The only way out of your fear is through it. Sink or swim. You know you need to do something, take action in your life, but your anxious thoughts are holding you back. But you're telling yourself they're not because it's easier to live in that reality than in the reality where you are aware consciously that your anxiety is holding you back and you should make a change, but you just physically can't. So you'll find any excuse possible to validate your own current life choice to stay stuck in the same position because deep down you feel like you could never actually make that change. And this makes you feel horrible. So you go on autopilot. What no one talks about is grieving the loss of your past self. As you continue to reclaim power against your anxiety, you are going to feel ashamed. You might look back on your life and view years wasted due to fear. And you might feel angry about that. Why didn't I start sooner? Why didn't I know what I learned now? Why, why, why? Don't be hard on yourself. It is okay to let go of the loss of who you once were and grieve her. Because here's the thing, that past version of you did the absolute best with what she was able with what she was given in that moment and you can't fault her because she ended up getting you to where you are right now and regardless of if you achieve 
anything else in your life, the fact that you are choosing to continue to get up, to continue to make progress, to even want to be the best version of you, congratulations. Most people don't ever even do that. So don't you dare hate your past self. Thank her. If you want to ever truly make peace with your anxiety, you have to come to the conclusion that people's thoughts and opinions of you are invalid. They're just, they're not real. Everyone has different life experiences, which cause them to think and feel differently. So stop living your life for everyone else. Just be who you are. It's a whole lot easier. Live one day at a time. View each day as a separate life, a whole new blank page. But instead of starting fresh now in this chapter, you can use all of the wisdom from all of the other days you've experienced in life to start fresh now. What have you learned from? How can you better yourself? Choose to be happy. It doesn't matter how horrible yesterday was. Today is a new day. It doesn't even matter if it is 10 o'clock at night. You can choose to turn your day around for the better. Okay, let's get deep. Listen, your anxiety is never going to stop. This episode is rather an acknowledgement to the people who are struggling, trying to live their best life. I see you. I feel you. I'm one of you. This episode is a love letter to you. It is encouragement. You are going to get through this. Your anxious thoughts might never go away, but how you choose to deal with them is everything. That is how you are going to find success. That is how you are going to create your dream life. It is not magic. It has been with you all along. That little girl who had big dreams, had big hopes of the life that you'd live, the person that you'd become, she still lives inside of you. But you subconsciously locked her away and threw away that key. That key is still within you. It is in your mind. You can choose to mentally unlock that box, to let that little girl out, to heal your inner child, and to keep running towards her dream. To keep working on the life that she wanted so badly to have. You can find her. You can feel free again. It is your duty to not give up on your dreams, to not give up on yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, who else will? Everybody is consumed with their own stuff. So if you don't nurture yourself, if you don't encourage yourself, if you don't mother yourself, you might not ever get there. You will never be fully absent of your anxiety. It will always live within you. You might have your bad days. You might have your bad months. But don't forget that you hold the key. You can always come back to yourself. Your struggle is proof of your strength. To the woman who choose to run through fear, to accept it, to choose to live and thrive with your anxiety, you are a force to be reckoned with. No one will ever be able to stop you because the biggest hurdle in your life is yourself. And if you can consistently jump over that, you will be unstoppable. You know what you've been going through healing from. You know deep down what you really want out of life. You know it will be hard. You'll struggle. You'll get sick in some cases. You know that no matter what, anxiety will always be the devil trying to hold you back. But now there's only one question. Are you ready to fight? To the girl who's struggling, to the girl who thinks that you can't do this, you can't get through it, to the girl who thinks, why am I like this? You can do anything. You can achieve your dreams. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's scary. But you don't have to live life in fear. You can accept it for what it is. You can choose to nurture your dreams. You can choose to never lose sight of that vision, of that dream that the younger you had. You can get to it. You just have to believe in yourself. We were born with the most powerful thing in the world, and that is imagination. The belief that we can make anything happen. We can become doctors. We can become astronauts. We can do anything, be anything. And as we go through life, we get stuck. We get taught that it's hard, we can't do it. Or if we can, it's going to take endless amounts of studying and money and hardships to get to the where we will be. And even that, it's like a hard, hard 1% chance. But what me, what makes you think that you can't be one in the million? If the norm, if 80, if 80 something percent of people are struggling to think positively, if everyone's going through life thinking negatively, what if you are the one rare breed that thinks positive, that doesn't lose sight of that childlike hope, of that dream, of that belief that you can do anything, no matter what age you are, where you come from, what you look like. Don't give up on you. You can do anything you set your mind to. I believe in you so much. You can do it. I'm here to hold your hand throughout every step of the way. I am so real. I'm so genuine when I say I feel like we are connected. I 
believe in you so much and I am devoting my life to this podcast solely because I want to help women like you grow to thrive to glow up to feel beautiful and to live their dream life um thank you thank you for everything and to the younger version of me I am still out here working on your dreams and trying to make them come true at the end of the day We all owe that to ourselves. So I hope you find that strength, that passion, that love that is within you and use it as fuel to live your dream life. Thank you.